Welcome guys, today I want to talk to you about failure. This is probably one of the coolest topics because if you can master failure, then you really can master any other goal that you give yourself, whether you want to quit weed, alcohol, cigarettes, whether you want to launch an online business, it doesn't matter anymore because you've mastered the art of failing. So one of the first things you need to realize is that failure is a mental construct. And what I mean by that is, you can only fail when you've decided that you fail, right? If you don't decide that you failed, then you haven't failed. For example, right, let's say you have a business and you say it's gonna earn $100,000 in a year. And you're halfway through the year, nowhere near your goal. You've got four choices. You can quit and call yourself a failure. You can quit the business and call yourself not a failure. You're just changing direction, right? Or you can continue in the business and call yourself a failure. Or you can continue in the business and call yourself not a failure, right? It's, there's four different ways to look at it, but it's all what you decide. You only fail when you decide you fail. So what failure really is, is fear. And you probably already know that, but it's not fear of anything happening. So you're not having a fear of the result of the business failing. You're having a fear of how you're going to feel when the business fails. So everything we fear is usually just within ourselves. You're fearing your own emotions. And as we know from the blueprint, there's a bat. And as we know from the blueprint that feelings, all feelings and emotions come from thoughts and that's it. So you're really, you're fearing your own emotions which come from your own thoughts. It's a completely internalized system. But the worst thing that can happen is you have a thought and that gives you a feeling. Right? fully within your control, but most people don't think about it like this. Everyone's looking to the external world, so everything seems a lot more scary than it actually is. So what I want you to do is, when do a blueprint, you can think of a goal. Uh, I want you to have a goal, something really big and scary, something that's you know equivalent to if you're earning 50 grand a year and suddenly you say you want to build a business that makes a million dollars a year. Right? You want? I want a big goal, because it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to achieve the goal. Excuse me. It doesn't matter for how long it takes you to achieve the goal. What actually matters is that you get there, right? So I, I want you to make a really big goal. I don't care if it's make a million dollars a year or if it's quit smoking cigarettes, which you've tried a hundred times and failed. Quit weed, quit alcohol. I don't care what it is. Pick something and we're going to do it, right? It's as simple as that. If you remember with the blueprint training, you can start with a situation, a thought, an emotion, an action or a result. It doesn't matter. It's just a different way you go about it. But if you're going to set a big goal like we're going to do now, you're going to start with the results line. There's four C's that uh, have really helped me in the past and I, and I think it'll really help you as well. Four C's are commitment, courage, capability, and confidence. And we're gonna talk about that now. So, so when you first set your really big goal, it's gonna be a result, but you're going to have to know what you do in order to, to, to get that result. There's a result there. You're going to need to take certain actions in order to get the result. So when you dedicate yourself to regular actions in order to get a certain result, that's called a commitment. Right, so you've got a commitment. Now what happens is when you first set a commitment is your brain's gonna freak out. And there's a really strong reason for that. As you guys know, I talk about Albert and Rex all the time. Albert is your prefrontal cortex. That's the front part of your brain behind your forehead. And this is the part that is what we're dealing with now. We're coming up with plans for the future. We're thinking through time. This is what Albert can do. Rex is your amygdala. That's your emotional part of your brain right in the middle center. And that's the part that's going to freak out when you set a commitment that is way beyond what you have done in the past. So what happens is when you set a result or you set a goal that's way above what you've ever achieved before, uh, that's going to scare the hell out of Rex, your amygdala part of your brain. And the reason that it scares Rex is because Rex can sense failure and Rex's job is to avoid failure. Rex is just like a computer looking at zeros and ones. There's just pain and pleasure, pain and pleasure. And it knows that if you go towards pleasure, you're less likely to die. It knows that, but it's wrong. Because in ancient times, that's how it was, right? If you see a lion, that's pain. You run this way, better to survive this way. If you see bananas in a tree, you go and eat them, more likely to survive, right? Very simple times. That's when Rex evolved. We're not in simple times anymore. Now you've got to think through time. Right? You've got to make really big plans. You've got to live in the modern world with complicated things like politics, religion, and money. This isn't the same world that Rex grew up in. So Rex doesn't know anything, man. We Hear that? That's a takoi. <laughs> That's a gecko, actually. I'll tell you if we have a, a takoi sound. But these are the, the night sounds of Indonesia. Um, 
I don't think we'll hear monkeys tonight, but we will hear the, the lizards, so I'll, I'll let you know when that happens. Anyway, we're talking about a big goal. And so you've set the commitment. That's the first C of four Cs I'm going to be teaching you in this lesson. To become an exceptional person, you really need to know that Rex is going to pipe up at these times. When you set a commitment that's outside of your, your usual, what you've ever done before, Rex is going to freak out. The reason he does that is because he senses failure is a possibility and he doesn't want you to even try because you might fail. That's all Rex knows. So if you want to be an exceptional human being, you can anticipate this happening. So what's going to happen as soon as you set a commitment is your brain's going to seize up. You're going to not want to go and do the thing that you said you're going to do. And Rex is going to try and sabotage you the whole way there. That's what he's there for. That's what every other human has a problem with too. But if you know it's going to happen, you've got a massive advantage. I want you to imagine a world. This is a trippy thought experiment. But I want you to imagine a world in which Rex doesn't exist in anybody's brain. So everybody's just walking around with a fully developed prefrontal cortex and no emotional prehistoric part of their brain so everybody's just going around and doing what they need to do to achieve massive goals that they've all set for themselves and they do it one after another they all go about doing it what a different world that would be right but that's not reality that we live in because everybody that we know has wrecks in their brain stopping them from doing these huge things it's not just you it's literally everybody and the further you get in life is that you the further your ability to overcome these feelings that Rex is going to try to make you have, to try to stop you. So you need to feel the fears and move through it anyway. That brings me to the second C, which is courage. Now, courage, people think, is a good thing, right? When you say, oh, he, was very, he had a lot of courage, we see it as a positive thing. But it doesn't feel good. The definition of courage is to feel fear and then do it anyway. Right? Feel fear and do it anyway. Move through the fear anyway. So in order to be truly courageous, you must also be truly scared. When that, there's a, there's a uh, myth in Indonesia that every time you hear that, the little gecko going, nah, 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 that means you're speaking the truth. So what I just said was very true. But it's just a myth, you know, obviously. <laughs> so if you're aware of everything that I'm teaching you today, and you can use courage to overcome the fear that you know is inevitably going to happen. This is going to give you a huge advantage, and I'm going to tell you why. It's because it leads to capabilities. This is the third C I wanted to teach you. So if you experience courage for long enough and you go through the process of what you need to do, regardless of how you feel, because you know that's temporary, you're just training Rex in the moment, right? Um, by the way, the reason that Rex freaks out is because your brain looks into your history to see your capabilities and your uh, capacity to, to achieve the goal that you set yourself, and there's no evidence for it. Your brain doesn't believe you can do it because there's no evidence for it. Why should they believe it? But you need to know that you can develop skills in the meantime, and that's what courage takes you through, right? The more you go through the courage, the more you develop your capabilities in the process. The more you develop your capability, the less courage you need. They literally go like this. So you need a lot of courage. So the best example I used to use this with was when I was knocking doors for a living, right? You guys know I was selling drugs as a kid. I quit that. I didn't really want to work $20 an hour. So I was knocking doors, man. I just had to sell whatever. I sold pay TV for a couple of years in Canberra. And I was just knocking doors, knocking door, knocking door. Hey, man, do you want to buy it? Do you want to buy it? Talking to everybody. And uh, in the beginning, you need a lot of courage because you don't have any money, right? You're not making any money. No sales are coming in because you're not good at your job. You don't have the capabilities, the sales skills, the scale, sales capabilities. But if you keep knocking on the door and maybe your 50th door buys something, right? And you've used courage through the first 49 doors, the first 50 doors. But finally, you get a result. And now... Because you're using your reticular activating system, part of your brain, uh, you have a goal to earn a certain amount of money that year or to get your sales conversion right, rate to a certain percentage, right? So you're looking for all the little details along the way. Your brain's going to do that automatically. So when you go to that 50th door and you knock on the door and you give your presentation and they say yes, you're going to look for all of the things you did differently that one time. What did I do differently? Oh, I really looked for the need of the customer or I built rapport first, or we had a beer together, whatever, right? It doesn't matter, but you know, and you slowly gather all this intel that you can put together to increase your capabilities in that area. 
So the more capabilities you have in a specific area, the less courage you need to go and do said thing because your brain is not going to make you fearful because it has evidence in your history that you've achieved what you said you want to do. You need to give your brain this evidence and until you do, you're going to need courage. That's what, it's, that's what courage is. And that's why courage is so difficult and that's where the part most people fail in these four C's. So we covered the first three. They were commitment, courage and capability. The more capability you have in a certain area, the more confidence you have. So when you have full confidence, when I was knocking doors towards the end and I knew what I was doing and I was one of the best in the state at that particular role, um, it wasn't, I didn't, I felt no fear knocking doors, right? There was no worry about it. If you say, no, that's cool, man. I know there's someone else that wants it. I would just move on, move on, move on. And I would just keep going. And it didn't matter because I had built my capability up in the area. I had a lot of confidence. So when you have a lot of confidence in, in whatever area, you're going to keep going about it in the same way, but it feels right now. You know what I mean? It feels better. It feels correct. And that's a much better feeling than, than having to use courage to go through the whole thing the whole time. Thank you for all the feedback you guys gave me about the last training I did on the blueprint. Uh, that was really well received. I got a ton of good feedback. It really makes me feel good when you guys reach out to me and let me know this kind of stuff. And I've wanted to do this for a long time, but I'm trying to go through this in a really systematic kind of way to give you the right information that I think people should be taught before school. This kind of stuff is initial stuff that people just don't teach you ever um, about your brain and how to think. So uh, that's what we're going through, and it's gonna be it's gonna get deeper and deeper as we go along. I can promise you that. Um, so come along for the ride, and I'm building this up as we go. So there's going to be more stuff down the line as well. Um, but for now, uh, this is what it is. That's all from this video. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you again in the next one.